Welcome to the Bandus Concrete Service YouTube page. Um, the first order of business before we get going on any other filming uh, is I'm going to give you a little walk around of the truck that I drive personally. Um, it is an Oshkosh concrete mixer. Um, I think the manufacturing date on it is 2006. Um, it is numbered 34. There's a number there on the water tank as there, there's also a number on the hood back there. Um, the first thing you'll notice about it is it's large. I think I measured it once just out of curiosity and it, with the chutes folded up into the side. Um, it measures around 30 feet long um, and with the chutes all the way out to the side nor like they normally are, I believe it's around 10 foot wide. And it is also 13 foot 3 tall. So now we're around back of the truck. Um, this is the hood. The engine is in there. Um, if you're ever wondering how you open the hood of one of these, um, there's a latch on this side and on the other side. And then there's just a hood lift, a hood lift thing right here that just lifts the hood with the truck's air supply. It's basically just an air over hydraulic um, lift. If you're familiar with how like a cab over truck um, cab tips, it's the same system just for the hood. So this truck is powered by a Caterpillar C13 engine. Um, nothing really special about it. You know, it, it runs. Um, it's got compound turbos. That's about it. You know, you got the exhaust there, intake there, obviously. Um, being that it's mounted through a concrete mixer, it does have a PTO that runs the hydraulic pump. So right off of the front uh, crankshaft pulley or the harmonic balancer, there's a little drive shaft that then runs the uh, hydraulic pump back here. <clears throat> it's always turning, um, so the truck is always supplied with some sort of hydraulic pressure. Um, in the back here is where they have all the radiators. So there's a radiator for the coolant, there's a tranny cooler, there's a hydraulic fluid cooler. Um, there's an air after cooler. Um, other than that, the transmission is on the back of the engine, but actually facing forwards, I guess. Um, it's just a big Allison transmission. It's a six speed. Um, nothing necessarily special about that. <clears throat> this is the other side of it. If you're ever wondering what it looks like under there. And then up in there if you're wondering. So the hood shuts um, basically the reverse of how it opens. On the, on the hood jack there, there's just a little lever that flips back the other way and the hood comes down. That is the gear drive that turns the drum. Um, there's a hydraulic motor on the other side of that. That is the hydraulic motor that powers the gear system in there that spins the drum. The drum just rides on these rollers. Um, these rollers are not how the drum is powered. They just ride on that. Um, the drum is actually technically not tied down in the front. 
Um, it could hop, but because it weighs so much, it never does. But it just it just rides on those rollers. Looking underneath the truck, you got your front axle there. Um, got a fuel tank right there. This is the tag axles. Those will go up and down, um, depending on how you know heavy the load is. You know, I'll put them down or keep them up. If it's a small load, I don't need them. If it's a big load, obviously I need them. I have two rear axles right here. There's nothing necessarily special about those. They're just two rear ends. Also looking under the truck, that's the transfer case right there. So that's a drive shaft that goes to the front axle, then you can't see them, but there's drive shafts that go back that way. So actually, there are a bunch of drive shafts. So this drive shaft that you can see is what comes off of the transmission, which is up that way, which then goes into the top of the, top of the transfer case, which then sends power back out the back of the transfer case down there to the rear axles. You can't really see any of it from here, but just, I guess, imagine it. So up on the catwalk that I'm standing on now, um, this is what it looks like from up here. There's a lower hopper where the concrete comes out from the drum, falls into there, and then it goes down the chute out that way. This is the upper hopper where when you're in the batch plant, everything that gets loaded the truck comes down here, hits this chute, and it gets shot down into the uh, drum. Never seen what the inside of the drum looks like. There it is. Um, it's basically a big corkscrew. Here it is from a slightly better angle. Um, this particular drum is not super, super clean. It's going to get chipped out, actually. Um, the water that from the cab valve actually comes out right there. This is actually a little stub of a pipe that shoots water down into the drum. So this is what the drum would look like if you were standing inside of it, looking out towards the top. So that's the drum from the outside, obviously, from down the ground. Then you have all your chutes there. One thing to note is that concrete is affected by gravity. So because the drum is just a big corkscrew, it just pushes concrete up the top and then it hits the lower hopper and then hits the chute and comes down. Um, there is no extra stop or anything up in here to stop the concrete from coming down the chute. If the chute's pointed towards the ground and there's concretes in it, it's going to come all the way down the chute. There's uh, quite a bit of water piping here, so to actually fill the water tank <coughs> is this uh, port right here. Um, and I could turn that valve off or on. These valves here just open and close whether or not I could send water to the drum. So if I shut this valve, now the truck can't put water into the drum. Um, then if I were to shut this valve, it actually shuts the supply off to the water tank. I plan to make a video about the loading process of one of these trucks, and you'll see that in action um, in that video. Our trucks just carry two add-on chutes. Um, most jobs require both add-on chutes. Occasionally I'll only use one, um, occasionally I'll also use none, but most of the time on the job I'll unfold both fold-out chutes and then put the two add-on chutes onto the uh, end of my chutes. They, with all of the chutes folded out, they hook onto the last one. There are a couple other water valves here that drain different parts of the water system. So for, so for example, if you were to open this valve right here, it's actually draining the water pipe that then goes up uh, into the drum. The washer fluid is located here, just sort of behind the driver on the pedestal, which is this part right there. So this valve right here is what pressurizes the tank. So if you were to turn the valve this way, it sends air pressure into the water tank, which is uh, what gives the truck its water pressure. Um, so it can spray water out of the hoses or shoot water to the drum from up there. It's controlled with that. So that's the water tank where the water comes from. 
um, and holds 200 gallons. That water tank not only supplies the water that I need to throw into the drum if I need to mix up concrete and make it wetter, um, and it also supplies the water for any of my hoses. So there's a hose there and then there's a hose up there. And we'll just open up the door and climb inside of the cab. Um, it's not very spacious at all. Um, there's about enough room for you and um, only you. So I came in a little bit further. Um, this is just a quick sweep across the dash. Um, nothing necessarily special about any of these gauges. Um, that gauge is a little bit different. I'll uh, get into what that gauge does in a second. Um, also to notice there's a couple hydraulic controls here, or joysticks rather. Um, this one is to unfold and fold the chute. I'll show you that in a second. This swings the chute to the left or the right or up and down. Um, I can get into that also in a second. Um, first thing I'll show you though is I guess the gear shifter, or selector rather. Um, on this truck it's over to the left. You just have drive, neutral, reverse. Um, if you hit the mode button you can make it only shift to say second or third or whatever. You can just limit the number of shifts it'll do. Um, it's got a nice in-cab fan. That's my air conditioning. Um, across the top there's some other switches and stuff like that. They're a little bit different from other commercial vehicles. So I'll get into all that in a second. Um, but yeah. So this is the first gauge. Um, it tells me the fuel, the oil pressure, there's also coolant temperature, nothing special there. That one's my speedometer. Uh, this one is the RPM gauge, also nothing special. Um, it also tells me the air pressure in both front and rear air systems. Nothing special over there. Um, obviously that's the shift, the transmission gear selector, I already talked about that. Over here to the right, I have the key. This is the dimmer switch for uh, the dash if I had the headlights on. I have the headlight switch. Switch, this is my marker lights. I have heated mirrors, that's that switch. And this one would disable the daytime running lights. Um, <clears throat> nothing that's really special about any of those. So to my right here, as I'm in the seating position, um, I have a couple joysticks. So this one folds and unfolds my automatic chutes. Um, this is the lock for that. I'll show you that more in depth in a second. This joystick um, controls the way that my chute is pointing. So obviously if I were to move it this way, the chute would swing to the right, like that. Then obviously if I pull up to the left, the chute moves to the left, and just like that. Um, I've got the parking brake, nothing special. These are the HVAC controls, they're just to my right here behind the joysticks. Nothing special here, just, just heat. And I get to decide if it's uh, on defrost, or I have the have the option to put it on like a, the foot mode or face mode or whatever. Um, nothing special there. Across the top here, things are a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> so over here, these are some standard controls. So I have the Jake brake there on off. I could do low, medium, high. I usually just leave it in high, um, and then I can turn it off and on. If I'm off-road or around the yard, I turn it off, obviously. Um, this is a fan override. I can flip that on and make the fan on the engine constantly on. Um, there's an ABS code light if I need to make it tell me a code for something. So these switches are what I would use if I'm in the cab and need to, say, mix up concrete. Um, so let's say I show up on the job site and I'm told I need a 5-inch slump. What I would do is put the drum in full discharge mode, and then I would turn this switch on, and then I would could, so it depends. At this point, I could either push and hold this um, button here, and the truck would race all the way up to 2100 RPM, or if I've already had the truck running and have done this once already, I could just flip that once, and it'll just go to whatever <clears throat> RPM it was before. This is for my tag axle. If I put the tag axle down, um, I can adjust the pressure here depending on how big my load is. Um, this is the gauge that tells me how many 
how many pounds per square inch of pressure or air pressure there is in the tag axle airbags. <clears throat> These switches are uh, a little bit funny because the truck has axles that are driven um, or the truck has three axles that are driven. So normally in this particular truck um, the rearmost axle is what's driven. Um, if I were to flip this switch that would then lock in the other two axles. This switch um, is my high and low range. So that would change the transfer case from high, which is normally what you use on the road, or if I go off-road, I switch it to low, obviously. So when I show up on the job site, what I usually do first is switch it into low. And once I get going and take the truck from on the road, off the road, flip it into all-wheel drive. And then if I really, really have to, um, I could flip this switch and that would lock the rearmost axle. If I ever have to use a switch, there's a chance it's a situation that it shouldn't be in anyways, but I have the option to lock in that rearmost axle anyways. So this counter is actually the drum counter. Um, it counts how many times the drum rotates. There's a metal block that's attached to the drum that then gets uh, picked up by a little magnetic um, reader. As it goes by, it counts off one, two, or whatever. The truck is equipped with a, the truck is equipped with a radio. There's two speakers, one there, one over here. It's basic radio right there. Um, this is our communication radio. Uh, it's how you contact dispatch or whatever. Back behind the seat, there are a bunch of computers that control the truck so there's the engine control system is there the transmission control systems back there then there's the fuse panel over there I don't know that's necessarily important but it's actually behind the driver as he's sitting in the cab the slump of the concrete is a measure of its workability so the lower the number <clears throat> the stiffer the concrete is or the drier the concrete is or the harder it is to work <clears throat> higher numbers equal wetter concrete and the con you know at that point the concrete becomes more workable um, meaning it's easier to move um, it's considered looser or wetter so this gauge is the slump indicator now if you're a new driver or have never been explained what this gauge is actually telling you um, this gauge tells you absolutely nothing about the concrete all this gauge is telling you is how many pounds per square inch in hydraulic pro of hydraulic pressure it is taking to turn the drum at that particular moment. So over time or with a little bit of experience or some explaining or showing how or whatever you can point this needle at a specific number on this gauge and that would equal a certain slump of concrete. Now there are a lot of things that affect the way this gauge reads. Drum cleaning this is one of them. Um, so if you have a bunch of stuff built up on the fins, this gauge will read a little bit different. Um, size of load affects the way this is reading because it's only telling you how much hydraulic pressure it's taking <clears throat> to turn the drum. A smaller load is gonna read way lower than a bigger load for the same slump of concrete. Um, so the idea I sh the idea with the gauge is that <clears throat> the stiffer the load the more hydraulic pressure or power it takes to turn the drum so if you have stiff concrete the gauge is going to read way higher and then as it gets looser and looser as you're adding water the gauge the needle will start reading lower and lower um, another thing that'll affect it is like the aggregate used in the concrete so there's a difference with how this gauge is going to read if you have a trap rock mix versus a native stone or a mixed gravel mix, or if you had a concrete that has a pea stone mix or a pea gravel or some sort of 3-8 stone, it's going to affect how this reads. So like a, a trap rock mix is a rough mix, so it's the truck's going to have to put more power to the drum to mix the concrete compared to like a native stone mix. So you'll actually have a looser load with the gauge reading higher than if you had pea stone. Pea stone is the opposite. The drum, it's easier for the truck to turn that, so the gauge is going to read lower on a stiffer load than, say, if you had a trap rock mix or something. The way it, it's probably confusing, and it is confusing at first, but all you have to understand is that this gauge tells you absolutely nothing about the concrete. All it's telling you is that 
all it's telling you is how much hydraulic pressure in pounds per square inch it's taking to turn the drum at any particular time. The only way to know what the slump of the concrete is is to bring it up and actually look at it. So I guess I'll start the truck and show you uh, how different things operate, I guess. So right now I'm swinging the chute over to the right. <clears throat> so now I have the chute all the way to the right. This switch right here locks and unlocks my fold down chutes. So if I so if I flip that, <clears throat> that lock opens and closes. So now with it in the unlock position, I can push this lever forwards and my chutes fold out. And then, like before, I can go left or right. I can push it down, it'll go down, and pull it back up, and it goes back up. Then if I pull the lever back, the chutes will fold up. So these are my foot pedals. So obviously I have a throttle, and then I have my brakes, and then this pedal is actually how I control the drum from the inside of the cab. So if I push it all the way back, that makes that makes the drum turn in charge. If I push it all the way forwards, that would be putting the drum in discharge, or how I would then pour concrete and make the concrete come up the top of the truck and then out the chute. So we're looking at my fender control box. I'm still up in the cab. My foot pedal is actually connected to this lever. So if I'm outside of the cab, I can also control the drum while I'm standing next to it, but it, it's actually connected to my foot. So if I push it all the way in discharge, it moves that lever and the drum starts turning in discharge. If I push it all the way back, again, the truck goes to the charge and that lever goes up with the charge as well. This is my fender control box, um, or part of it anyways, the other part of it's technically down in there. So I can control the charge and discharge, like I talked about before. These switches are the same as the engine RPM switches that are in the cab. So if I flip that on, I can then increase the RPM of the engine, or decrease it, or just shut it all the way off, and it'll just go back to idle. Down in there, there's a set of levers that control, um, the chute, so you can go left or right, up or down, and then fold and unfold with this one over here. It's basically the same exact controls that are in the cab on my right side. So on this joystick, there's also this red button that stops the drum, so I can click it and the drum stops, and if I click it again, the drum starts turning. The way that I drive, I actually never use this button. So I can give you a quick demo of these switches as well. So let's say I want to race the truck up. Normally it'd be off. I can push it on. And then if I press and hold this, the RPMs of the truck will start to increase. <clears throat> so if I were on a job, and needed to mix up my concrete, I would push my foot all the way back to get the charge in full disc, uh, get the drum in full charge. I would then flip these switches, raise the truck all the way up to 2100 RPM, and then add water as needed. 
So that brings me to the next thing. Um, adding water. Uh, to my left here, I have my cab valve. So if I open this, now I would be adding water into my concrete through the uh, pipe that goes into the drum. Or I could shut this, and then now the I will be shutting the cab valve. On this particular truck, um, just outside of the cab right here, this is actually where the cab valve is. So that lever I was turning just opens and shuts that valve right there, and that water pipe goes all the way up there to the top of the drum, and there's a pipe that points into the drum that shoots water in there. So that's that, I guess. It's just a quick walkthrough of what the inside of one of these trucks looks like, what makes it tick a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I can go into certain things more in more detail if you want. Um, but hopefully it was informative. Uh, maybe you found it interesting, so that's good. Let's get this sucker back in the garage. The next time that you uh, see videos here, it'll be from inside of the cab. I have four cameras that I have mounted inside of the cab. So there are two that face forward, one for an in-cab view, one that points out the front windshield, then you'll get uh, a left and a right window view.